So I want to welcome you all tonight and say that it's a great opportunity for me to stand here and tell you about uh, a technique or a procedure or let's call it a new paradigm in treating periodontitis. And I think it's great for you to be here because it's an opportunity to learn something really brand new. This is brand new and that it's becoming more and more mainstream. It's actually been around for a little while, but it's probably new to most of you. And I, I'm going to say to you that it's not going away. So what you learn tonight, I hope, will be an introduction uh, to the use of a particular laser to treat periodontal disease. And I'm emphasizing particular for a reason, because as some of you may know, there are different types of lasers but you can't treat periodontal disease with every laser. I'm only talking about a specific one tonight. Um, so I, I want to say that it's nice to see you take advantage of getting the CE. You, don't have, you didn't have to travel too far. I hope it's worth more than you pay for it. <laughs> or I hope it's at least worth that glass of wine. And I, and, and I, and I really think it will be. For sure, it's going to benefit your patients. And that's why we're all here, and that's why we all get up in the morning, because it benefits our patients. And I'm going to show you how it does that. I want to take a moment to thank Colgate and Procter & Gamble for co-sponsoring this. Let me do that right now. You know, Colgate and Procter & Gamble, these are, these are enormous companies. And that's good, because they support a lot of what goes on in dentistry. They support our patients. They support our practices. They do a lot of good for our profession. So it's my honor, really, to acknowledge them. Uh, they have a place in, in all of our practices. And I want to tell you that uh, Tina and Chris, when they come to the office, uh, I hope that uh, uh, there's time to listen to them, to take advantage of what they have to say. If you're not doing business with them, well, at least hopefully listen to them because they have a lot to offer and uh, it's an important part of what we do. So again, I want to thank you guys in particular for making this possible and uh, for making it easier to have and uh, I wanted to say that to both of you. Um, also, I want to mention the Northeast Florida Dental Hygiene Association. And the reason I want to mention that is, um, who is Beth? Is Beth here? No? Okay. Beth sent out um, emails at the request of one of our hygienists, Pam. And I guess some of you may have gotten her email. And I wanted to thank her. And I, th and I understand that the meeting last week, they were nice enough to have you know, the flyers about the meeting and uh, to put them out. So I wanted to thank them for at least you know, being on board with what I'm trying to do. And uh, I, I appreciate that very much. Um, I want to go actually backwards. I, I was trying to figure out where to fit this in. I didn't know whether to fit in. The, there's a video that I'm going to show you. I didn't know whether to put it at the, at the end of the talk or at the beginning of the talk. So you know what? Because of, for technical reasons, I'm going to just show you how this laser works. Kind of, it's kind of like a cartoon. It's an animation. So I want to just show you what we're talking about. And then we'll talk about it. The periolase fiber, about the size of three human hairs, is gently placed between the gum and teeth to remove the diseased tissue inside the pocket. This laser fiber selectively removes the diseased tissue and kills the germs that cause gum infections, while leaving healthy tissue unharmed. This also improves access and visibility for better removal of the barnacles of calculus from the surface of the teeth. Tiny ultrasonic root cleaners vibrate these deposits away and flush them out with antibacterial rinse. Once the surfaces of the teeth are clean, the laser is used a second time at the bottom of the pocket to remove any remaining debris and to sterilize the pocket, soft tissue, root, and bone. This also causes the blood to become sticky, creating a seal around the teeth. Once the seal is formed, 
we have created a clean, closed, and stable environment for healing to begin. We have tipped the scales in favor of regeneration versus degeneration. You can't talk about lasers, any laser, without talking about a little bit about laser history and physics. Now, if you suffer from insomnia, I highly recommend you learn about laser physics. It, it will cure you, I promise. I, and I also pledge that I will not spend much time on this, but we have to touch upon it just for a short period. Then we're going to talk about periodontitis, something you, you know plenty about, um, but I have to put it in the proper perspective. Um, let's, then we're going to talk about the clinical reality of the downhill perio patient. You know, I know they're hidden, and I know that I know I'm probably the only one that ever sees this. I, don't, I know all of, none of you, none of you have a downhill perio patient because you're so good at scaling those nine millimeter pockets, especially on the distal number two, that you don't have downhill patients, just, just me. So I'm just gonna tell you about what happens to me. Um, then we'll talk about the perio lays MVP7, which is the machine that actually does what I just showed you. Very importantly, the scientific proof that it works. I can show you all the pictures, but if there's no science behind it, that's not good enough for me and what I do, and it shouldn't be good enough for you either. Um, all right, so then the fun part is we're gonna, I'm going to show you some clinical and radiographic proof that it works. We've got some really terrific uh, radiographs and some clinical things. And then um, you can ask me questions and uh, have a reasonable shot at knowing the answer. So let's go. Uh, what's the scope of periodontal disease that we treat? 200 million people, 50% of which have moderate to severe periodontal disease, and only 3% get treated every year? 3%? I would say there's an unmet need. So let's do some more statistics. 50 out of 100 Americans have moderate to severe gum disease. 40 out of the 50 don't know it. I don't know, maybe uh, they were afraid to ask or maybe someone was afraid to tell them. Um, and then only two of them will ever get treated before it's too late. Too late meaning that they'll lose their teeth. Well, then we can talk about you know, the US Surgeon General, so the government has their statistics and the ADA has their statistics of 75% of adult Americans have some form of the disease. I go with the scientists. This fellow, uh, Michael Newman at UCLA, is an authority on this sort of thing. So he estimates that more than 100 million American adults suffer from moderate to severe gum disease, yet only 3% receive treatment in a given year. So that's, that's the statistic. Uh, even if he's off by a little, it's an awful lot of people not getting a lot of treatment. So we gotta ask ourselves why that is. If we can't treat people who have a disease, who have one of the most prevalent medical conditions that exist, if we can't treat them because they might lose their teeth, why else might we want to treat them? Maybe we can help them in their overall well-being. Maybe we can help them with preventing them from getting heart disease. So I got to say, this is, I found this. Cardiodontics. I, I, I thought it was incredibly unique. I got to say, I found this, this particular slide. I thought it was cute. But, but really, it's kind of apropos because, um, you know, we need to find a way to get people to understand that it's important to treat mouth inflammation. And if you can't get them to do it because they might lose their teeth, maybe you can get, get them to do it because they might lose their life. So that's where that came from. But cardiodontics, I thought, was a, a, a cute way to uh, describe it. So, you know, we've all seen, uh, you know, this kind of diagram, you know, all of the different interactions between uh, mouth inflammation uh, and the various organ systems. We know about the heart. We know about strokes. Um, here we have, oh, we know about um, the increased risk of uh, preterm or low birth weight babies. Um, diabetes. Most of us are, are aware of all these things and you know what, this is a very, very complex and evolving area. I went to a meeting in New York last Friday and um, a gentleman spoke who is an absolute authority on inflammation and uh, I'll, I'm going I'm to share what I learned. This is the one thing that I got from the, from the, from the meeting and that is 
that reducing inflammation in the body is more important than having low, LD, low LDLs. LDLs are the bad cholesterol. If you have inflammation, that's worse than having high LDLs. So he suggested aspirin, if your physician suggests that, or fish oil. But again, a different topic, but this is a constantly evolving area. What it means to us is, is that you know, the science is progressing. It's becoming more complicated. The physicians are acknowledging the relationship between inflammation and a patient's general well-being. And it's incumbent upon all of us to convey to the patient that, you know, not that necessarily they're missing the uh, visto buckle of 18, and there's a little plaque, but what about all of the redness or, you know, uh, what about the disease that's present in other areas? What can we do about that? And why is it important that we do something about that?